Hey, what's up, people? Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about gang stalking. Now, gang stalking is something simple. People follow you. People try to agitate you. Not gang as in street gang. A lot of people hear that and they think, oh, what are you talking about? The Bloods and the Crips. No, it's organized intimidation. Now, the first time I really truly noticed uh, I was under gang stalking, I knew I was being heavily monitored already by the secret societies I had offended, but I did not know specifically that I had been contracted, or not me contracted, but people had been contracted specifically to agitate me, right? I thought this was a thing, hey, just me between me and the secret societies, they're going to kill me or not going to kill me, who knows. Anyhow, I was in the deep south. I was in Mississippi, and at the time, um, I was saying something on YouTube, and somebody had wrote me a message saying, be aware, as in, like, trying to intimidate me, and then that day, I had went out of the hotel, I was at the Capitol in Jackson, Mississippi, walking around. And I'm listening to the woman, she had a nice, pretty southern voice, I'm hanging out, you know, family people are there, I'm just there by myself, just chilling, right, absorbing, you know, just absorbing the energy of Mississippi, trying to enjoy it. You know, I got a lot of family in Jackson, Mississippi, my father is from Jackson, Mississippi, but I didn't go there to see family, I just went there just to relax. And that, in the, in the Capitol, in the Capitol, uh, a security guy was sitting there staring at me. I'm like, okay, that's unusual. And he was just looking at me. And so I started looking around. I'm thinking, like, I mean, did somebody steal something or something? What, you know, what's going on? And so then I go back to the hotel. Now, as I'm walking back to the hotel, I'm looking around and everything like that. And <clears throat> I don't see anybody. And so I get back to the hotel. And I notice that I go to get something to eat at the hotel. This is a real nice hotel. I forget, I forget which hotel it was. Real nice hotel in Jackson, Mississippi. You know, big, huge, gigantic uh, a lot, you know, the, the old archaic type design, and so I'm eating at the hotel, and that, you know, got a restaurant stuff, and uh, I noticed that the people working there kept looking at me, and I'm thinking, like, all right, man, this is getting weird, you know, and so I, I'm just, I'm just like, what, what's going on, and then I thought to myself, wait a minute, there's something strange going on here, and so after that, um, what happened? I, you know what, I ended up going to a few bars down there, and I, I actually ended up meeting a senator from Mississippi, like a senator type person, uh, that, you know, the big politics stuff, and uh, I, I'm hanging out with a senator and stuff like that, and, you know, no one's looking at me, I'm just hanging out with him, and so I'm thinking, I'm like, what, you know, there's something weird here, I'm, I'm hanging out with a senator, um, before that I'm walking around the Capitol, people are staring at me and stuff like that, and it, it just didn't, nothing was adding up, you know, uh, this was getting towards my way back from Mississippi, to Michigan, and so I'm coming back, and I get back to Michigan, and then um, I notice that, like, you know, th you know, the neighborhood I live in, that all the neighbors, they're changing, they're acting different, they're responding differently to me, I say, okay, something, you know, something's going on, and so, but I didn't know what gang stalking, I, I wasn't really sure what gang stalking was, I knew who the secret societies were, you know, I had, I had, um, interacted with these people, some of them, not all of them, well, now I have. Now I have interacted with a few different of them personally, one-on-one, -on -one, but it was just a main group that I had interacted with in Hollywood, and so I know these people. I, I know what they look like. I know what type of people they are. You know, I know what's going on, and so I'm thinking, this is between me and them. So I, I had no intention of thinking, like, oh, man, my neighbors? Like, these people would never interact with my neighbors. You know what I mean? They wouldn't even let my neighbors see what, who they were. And then I realized, wait a minute. They must have, ne these people being as powerful as they are or whatever, this is, I'm being purposely monitored. So the powers that be went through, channeled through the city, as in like, you know, probably the mayor's office or whatever, just a local police department or whatever. But that doesn't mean they know anything about what happened. That just means they said, hey, keep an extra eye on this guy. We might feel he's a threat. You know, maybe they put, said I was like a terrorist or something. You know, we live in the space age. All that's possible. And so I'm like, oh, okay. And, but I know the whole time, I know what's going on. I know my situation with, with, um, you know, the people who, who run everything. And so, I mean, that's people, I don't want to say it like that. That's people who run everything, but you know, the secret side and stuff like that. And so I'm looking at it like, it didn't make sense because I'm like, there's no way these people would have anything to do with the, my neighbors. I know they wouldn't. And it made, okay. So they went through the city and they put me on a gang stalking thing. And now I'm now I'm saying okay now this makes sense, this is intentionally they, they they put some money on the table and it's not just that you know I've been in situations where I was out walking and the whole fire department 
went by. As in, like, but they were cool, though. See, the thing about it is, is I embraced these people. I was going like this, like, honk, and the fire department people started honking. I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm with the gang stalking people, you know what I mean? And so it, was, it, it became, like, an entertaining thing. And then I said, wait a minute, I'm going to start hanging out with these people. So I went out in the corner, and um, I walked the corner where I live, and I kept walking, walking, walking. To I get far away from uh, my, the neighborhood I live in, and then I start seeing these people up close and personal, their faces, what they look like, and I'm like, I was scared of these people? This is it? And so I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what? And so I start waving at them and stuff like that, and I start like, you know, every, I'll start dancing for them and stuff, and I'll start, you know, making funny faces for them, and I'll, I'll do certain types of things, you know, and, and it's like, some, a lot of them are cool. To be honest with you, some of them will try to act all stiff and tough and stuff like that. And if they if they feel like that, then I'm like, all right, man, you know, I'm not going to take that from you. That's where you're at. But then I took it a step further and I said, wait a minute. They did this in the neighborhood that I live in. I live in my mother's place. They did this. I live in North Shore, Michigan. They did this at my mother's place. Where else can they do this? And so I said, wait a minute. I'm going to take them to the hood. Can the gang stalking people, will they come to the hood? So they, I go I go to the hood, then they start contracting all the people in the, in the neighborhood in the hood. They start paying people for the outdoor. Now, these are people I've been knowing my whole life. I grew up with these guys. We went to elementary school together. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't care who they are. If, if I take you, there, I can take you right now um, to, you know, we can go to any area. We can go to any area, the, the west side, the east side, um, wherever we go, everybody knows who I am. And so, but these people are getting paid $50 to, you know, I'm guessing. I didn't, I, I never ask anybody directly. I don't want to. But $50 or something, $100 maybe, drive by me with the headlights on. Right? Now, these are people I know. So they can't really, there's, they're limited as to how they can interact with me. What do they do? Mean mug me and stare at me? I've been knowing you for 25 years. I mean, we're, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not going to hurt me. And so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a funny situation. So I started making light of it. I'm like, oh, okay, this is what's up. And then it goes on. The gang stalking stuff goes on. It goes on and on and on and on. And then everywhere else I go, like I can go to Grand Haven, uh, Michigan. I went to high school in Grand Haven, Michigan. We had moved to a place called Ferrysburg, Michigan when I was like in seventh, eighth grade. So I ended up going to high school out there. And so I know a lot of people in Grand Haven, Michigan. And so, you know, like younger preppy type people, um, you know, some of the guys I grew up with, man, wow, man, their parents were really well off. And so I'm interacting, so I see some of them, and they know me, they know, they, you know, they all know me, all the people in my age group and stuff like that. And so I can tell, you know, we kind of got a thing, I'm like, oh, man, this is, this is, this is tripped out. The gang stalking people can go wherever you go. I'm like, oh, my God, this is too funny. And so, so I'm going through this for a year, just watching people. And the biggest thing you got to do is let people absorb, you know, put your vibration out there. Just stand on the corner. Go find, a, it doesn't have to be where you live. Go find a corner and just stand there and absorb it for like three, four hours at a time. Walk up and down the street, go get something to eat, you know, go sit down. Um, your food could get drugged. My food's been drugged a few times at restaurants. You know, that's a possibility. So go home and eat it if, if you don't want to do that. But um, just absorb the energy of the gang stalking people. And actually, my food got drugged, and I, and actually, I was still out there doing it, man. I'm still out there doing it. I went to Burger King in downtown Muskegon, right? And I walk up to the woman working at the counter. And I give her my name. I give her my phone number, a piece of paper. I give her a flyer. I tell her my situation, my life. And I say, please let me know if you're going to drug my food. They still drug my food. And I was like, oh, man. And whatever drug it was, it was intense. Because I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there hanging out. I'm eating the, uh, I'm eating one of the hamburgers, you know, at Burger King, and I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden I feel the high coming in from the drug, and I'm like, this is different. What the fuck? This is some sort of psychiatric drug, and then like I'm like, oh man, and, you know, I'm like, oh my god, I'm high as hell off this drug, and so I walk, I so I walk up there and I'm trying to scare him. I'm like, I'm gonna bring the FBI on you. You know, I'm just saying that just to scare him. I'm not gonna go do that to him, but. And so the woman, she's talking on the microphone. He's like, he's talking about the FBI. And she, the woman working there. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm laughing. It's funny. I'm high, I'm high off the drug they put in my hamburger. And then I'm laughing at, um, you know, the whole thing is just fucking crazy. I'm just like, what the hell? And so 
Then I wanted to scare the people. There's a, the police station is right across the street from Burger King. And so I'm like, I want to scare you. So I go into the police station, walk up to the window, start talking about, I start talking about the establishment with the people. I start talking about Freemasonry and stuff. And the woman working there is like, what are you talking about? People can follow you where you eat and stuff like that. And I'm just like, the whole thing is crazy. And then I leave. And then I swear to you, they, the real a group that I got into it with, the Nazi Nazis, like Skull and Bones, but the families from the paper... Uh, Project Paperclip Nazis that came into America. This gets into a lot of my other research and stuff, but <clears throat> they're monitoring me closely. And so, obviously, I found something out. I was talking about something that really aggravated them. But they're in the hood. They're in the... They, not yet. You know, it's one thing to hear about the FBI, the feds are in the hood. There's Nazis in the hood. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh my God, that is crazy. I brought real Nazis to the hood. And I'm sitting there, I walk, up to, I walk up to some guy, I don't know who he is. And obviously they had paid him to stand there. What they do is they cruise through, they see, they see where you're going, and they cruise through and recruit whoever they can. About time you get there, I'm on foot. About, you know, I do it like they did in ancient Greece, I walk it out. So by the time I get there, all these people they paid, I just walk up to the people, I, I don't know who they are, but I know, I know, that, I know they're going to feel my vibrations. I'm on the drug, never... I got my flyer. I'm under the influence of the drug. I'm still jump roping high off the drug. I got my flyer. I'm like, man, we're just gonna hit them up high. You know what I mean? We're not gonna, we're not gonna let, we're not gonna let. I will not allow the Nazi entities to drug me and make that stop my program. You know what I mean? And so I walk up to the people, hit them with the flyer. I'm like, yeah, man. My name is Jamil. I had did some interviews. You know, I got put on a political political agitators list, but all it did was make me better. Yada yada. So I'm talking to them, and I'm like, yeah, you probably know my father. And so he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew your, you know, they, they, they actually, they knew who my family was and who my people were. And I can tell I was having more influence with them in that moment than the people that paid them. Because the woman's like, I know your father, I know Curly. You know what I mean? And so I'm out there rapping with them, telling them about my experiences. And the whole thing, I'm like, why am I on the drug? Then I'm jump, then I'm hitting the jump rope. You know what I mean? I'm, hit, I'm hitting the jump rope. I'm hitting the jump rope. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm just walking around, and um, you know I like females. You know what I mean? I, I like females, and so I'm out there, and they, and they recruit. And, and the big, the best thing about the gang stalking stuff is they get the females I know. I like they they find a female with the fattest ass boy, I, and to try to try to tease me and make me want them and stuff like that, so they can re so they can like reject me. And the gang stalking people think that's somehow supposed to like ruin my life or something like that. That makes me better. That makes me more potent. That makes me, that makes me like, you know, lions like to hunt. I enjoy the process of, of getting the female, not just the sexual experience of the female. I enjoy the process of getting her. And so, you know, I, that's, that's when I spit, that's when I spit, uh, you know, spit, spit game. But, but that's, that's when I really start rapping with them. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there talking to them. And man, they have, I don't know where the gang stalker people found these women, but they got some fine ass. So wherever I go, there's just some fine ass <laughs> females walking around. I swear, I swear to you, this gang stalking stuff is all, man, this gang stalking stuff is cool. I tell you what, I, I, I gang stalking didn't change my life. It made my life. I, I do everything now, man. I, I'm out there just, just, just get into the vibration of it and everything will be all good. And, uh, boy, and so that, that's, I just tell them my story. I just tell them, you know, this is what happened to me, you know, and, and all this. And, um, everything's cool, man. I think it's just, it's day to day, moment to moment, how you deal with stuff. Like the headlights that come when you're, when you're out there walking and stuff and the headlights come and you see them a lot of, that bothers a lot of people who get gang stuff. It doesn't bother me. I've been sitting there, there's been like 20, 30, 40 cars with the headlights, I'm all for it, man. I'm like, yeah, you know, what's up? I, I'm waving at him and stuff like that. One guy even picked me up and gave me a ride. I don't think he was a gang stalking guy, though. He was an older white dude in the truck. Picked me up. I was walking to Grand Haven, Michigan. He comes by, sees me, picks me up. He's like, yeah, I just saw you walking. Blah, blah, blah. Drew took me there. There's another female. She's fine, too. She She's married now. She has two kids. But at one time, I at one time I dated her very mildly, very mildly when I was like 19, 20. And so she saw me walking. She's fine too, man. Young, light-skinned black female. And so she's like, oh my God, there's Jamil. And so she sees me, picks me up, you know, and she got her two kids. She's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to the lake. And so I go to the lake. Do you know these people contracted her? They came and contracted. And I'm like, she's married with kids. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I was just trying to, you know, she just gave me a ride. They contracted her. 
and used her. When I was coming back from the lake the other day, she drove she drove past me. She had her she had her hair changed and glasses on and stuff like. I'm like, man, they you look. <laughs> I'm like, man, you you know that's what's up though. Now now I see you more than I saw you before, so that, that's cool. And a lot of times, like I was, I'm coming out, I saw her again after that, and she was with her husband. And her husband was like looking all like he didn't know what to do and stuff like that. And I thought, why do people always look scared, man? Like the gang stalking people, they always look scared. You ever notice that? I don't know, it's just me. They always, it's like, why do you look, you know, you're following a champion. First things first, you're following a champion. Don't look, don't, you know, I'm not new to it, I'm true to it. I've been getting gang stalked for a year. Everything's going to be all right. Stop being scared. Everything's going to be all right. You know, that's, that's first thing first. And so, and boy, they got, they got some, they, some of those women that do the gang stalking stuff, man, they had a couple of them, boy. One of them, one of them, one of them, whew, she was, I was way down in Green Haven, Michigan, Lakeshore walking, and one of them had, she looked just like Paris Hilton, just like her. I'm like, man, I want, I want to, I want to talk to her. I want her to gang stalk me more. And so that's, that's the type of mentality you have to have with, and with the, the guys that get the gang stalking and stuff like that. I just, you know, man, it's like. Some of them will give you like a mean look or something like that. I'm like, you know, what what do you want? No, no I'm just saying. But I, I just be peaceful. I just be like, all right, man, hey, how are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And I go about my business. But just keep feeling the vibration of gang stalking. Keep feeling it. it you know, I'm telling you, I beat gang stalking. And if I beat it, I know you can do it. I know anybody else out there can beat it. If I beat gang stalking, I know you can beat gang stalking. And I'll come to wherever you are. It's easy, man. It, this stuff is nothing. It, this made my life 110%. You know, if you're getting gang stalked, you're getting gang stalked for a reason. That means you got greatness within you. So if you got greatness within you, you just got to pull it out of you. That's all there is. Just pull that greatness out of you. You know, that's why I always tell female, when I approach a female, I tell you, you got greatness within you. Just, you know, that's why I tell her, you got greatness within you. And so just let it be at that. If you're getting gang stalked, it's for a reason. There's something within you that's big enough to attract this, and it's all spiritual. You know, it's, it's all spiritual. I'm a highly spiritual person. I talk to God every single day. I don't let a day go by. And I don't care if you're Muslim, if you believe in Allah, or you're, you're Christian, you believe in Jesus, or you're Buddhist, and you, you hang with Buddha. I, I read every, I read the, the, the Bible. I read the Catholic Bible. I read the Quran. I read the Mormon Bible. I read in the Scientology. I, you know, through all my research, I read all this stuff. I'm with all of it. Just talk to God. Just talk to the higher spirit. Not, not because you're afraid of anything, but talk to the higher spirit to make you better. Whatever you want to do in your life, the gang stalking program will help you achieve it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell people the gang stalk. I'm not trying to tell you to go out and get in trouble to get gang stalked. I'm telling you, it changed my life. You know, I'm serious. It changed my life. It it made me ten times more better than ever. Ten times more better than ever. I I, I kid you not. Had I not entered the gang stalking program, my life. <laughs> I'm, serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. If you're getting gang stalked, contact me. If I'm sick of seeing people sad and upset and angry on YouTube talking about after me. Arr. Man, that's all that's all smoke and mirrors, man. You know, that, that that's just an illusion, man. You you gotta you gotta embrace the gang stalking. Embrace the, go stand on the corner and watch the people driving towards and just look at me. Absorb the vibration. Take it in. Go home, go to sleep, go to work, whatever you got to do. The next day, come out, absorb it. Do that for about three, four days and take a break for a couple days. That's what I used to do. I used to just go out there in the middle of winter and just sit there early in the morning. I'd sit there and laugh at the cars. I'd do whatever I had to do, man, to get through it. Come back home, you know what I mean? Absorb the vibration, process the vibration, clear it out, go back out, do it again, do it again, do it again. And when I went to Phoenix, it was really going down, dog. It was really, that's when they started drugging my food when I was in Phoenix. And they were angry, man. They were angry. They could not beat me. The gang stalking people could not, they tried everything. They tried to put, they tried, they tried everything. They tried to have, they had the police roll up on me in Phoenix, flashing the lights on me. They had gangbangers try to approach me. Not, nothing scared me. I'm, I'm motivated. I'm dedicated and motivated. What? Put the program out, put it on me. Remember that movie, The Game with Michael Douglas? That's what gang stalking is like. Everybody's in on it. I want, I want the program. Give me the fullest, give me, give me all of it. Give me 195% of it. You know what I mean? Drug my food, electronic weapons, uh, females walking by looking sexy, and I'm not supposed to talk. I mean, let me have all of it. Let me have all of it.
That's why I asked for in my conspiracy research, isn't it? Didn't I ask to get to be noticed by the powers that be? Well, it happened, and they gave me the program. I think it, I think it's awesome, to be honest with you. I'm serious. <clears throat> Just embrace it. Just embrace it. Matter of fact, there's a group called Parliament that came out with a song called Flashlight, uh, uh, Flashlight, and put the, I put that on my headphones. I was in Phoenix. I was walking down the street, pause the jump rope, hit the jump rope, bah, 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 bah. put put you listen to listen to music, flashlight, and then you put that in your mind and you see the lights. And I'm like flashlight, flashlight, and I enjoyed it. I went to the club. I went to the club. They had a waitress. Fine, man. She walked up to me. The flashlight was flashing like this from a distance. I mean, I'm like, man, this is a psychological pro. I will not allow this, this. I will not allow these entities to interrupt my frame of thought. You know what I mean? That, that's, <laughs> That's how you take it, man. I don't know how these entities do it. And so I'm out, there, I'm out there, I'm out there doing everything, man. I'm, I'm out there doing everything, you know. I'm going back, actually. The hotel I was at, half that hotel was there just for me. There was a certain percentage of gang stalkers. There was a certain percentage of people straight from the Grand Masonic Lodge, uh, coming from the Duke of, way over in London. There was a percent. There was American Masons there, high, high degree Masons. You know, there were there were the skull and bones entities. You know what I mean? There, there were there were all that stuff was there. All that stuff was there, and I was enjoying it. I was like, oh man, this is a party, man. You know what I mean? All this stuff is here just for me. That's how that's how big I am. That that let me know I'm bigger than game stalking, dog. How, how are you? How how how, how am I going to be angry about game stalking? And I got people coming from England just to observe me in person and see what type of entity I am. See, that's the first thing that, that really tripped me out was I'm not just being gang stalked. I got, I got world powers looking at me because of what I, because of the energy that I went through, because of what I know, what I've been experienced, everything. You know what I mean? And so it's just like they just all know me. Ain't that something? Right, right now as I'm talking to you, there, there's people... Right now, as you're watching this video, there's people way high up there in the world. Not in gang stalking. Gang stalking is like the low stuff. There's people up there high, high, high behind the scenes just tripping off me. Like, man, this guy, what, what's going on? You know, what's, what's going on? And all I'm trying to do is say, you can be all you can be in the, the gang stalking program. That's all I'm saying. Whatever you got to do, you can do. You can, if you believe, you can achieve. <laughs> but I, but that's all I, that's that's all I do is, you know, I tell people my story of glory, what happened to me, and how I'm going through it. So I'm serious. This is this is a serious invitation. If you truly feel like depressed and like your life is ending, and you you thought about suicide or you thought about just checking yourself into to a home because you think you're crazy or something like that, man, come contact me. Call me. I live in Norton Shores, Michigan. You know, right next to Muskegon, Michigan. And you can come see me. You can come fly into Chicago, and then Chicago will fly you here. Or fly in Detroit, and Detroit, from Detroit you fly here. You can come hang out with me. You can come hang out with Jamil Rawls. I'll show you everything about my life. I'll walk around and explain to you who I am and what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And Or I'll come to you. If you got the money, I'll come to you. You pay for me to come to you. You can come to me. I'm, I don't charge you nothing, dog. I don't care who you are, man, woman, young, old, whatever you're going through. You can come to me. If, if you're a person in the, if you're a gang stalker, you might be somebody who does do gang stalking. You might be tired of it. You might just be like, man, I want to come hang out with Jamil. You know what I mean? Get, get, let's get it cracking, dog. So hit me up, Jamil Rawls versus gang stalking at Gmail. And oftentimes you'll see I put stuff about Muhammad Ali on my thing. Now, I met Muhammad Ali. I met Muhammad Ali at a very young age. I was about seven years old, eight years old. And he came to the clock tower on um, Broadway in Muskegon Heights back in the, this, like, 92, 93. And I used to take karate class. I took karate for a few years. And one of the, uh, one of the masters I took karate, you know, he was out there that day. He had, he had a thing going where people were doing karate. <laughs> you know? And we're all out there, we're all out there hanging out doing karate and stuff. And then Muhammad Ali shows up. So my mother says, okay, we're going to take him to meet Muhammad Ali. And I walk up to Muhammad Ali and he's big, man. You know, big dude. And he has like <clears throat> the Nation of Islam bodyguards around and stuff. So I walk up to him. I'm like, okay, I want to meet the champ. So I walk up to him and I try to shake his hand. And he grabs my hand and he gives me a hug. 
and and I, I felt his energy, but it wasn't until now that it kicked in. His energy for so, something about that experience of hugging him and gaining his energy, it really kicked in, and <clears throat> the greatness that he had to beat an opponent, to wear an opponent out, man, like you know, bigger, stronger guys. He he beat he took on the biggest, baddest guys. That's the energy that I took on. Like you know, who are we going against today? You know, who who who. Who is trying to keep me disconnected from myself? Is it the Skull and Bones entities? Is, is, it, the, is it the Duke of Kent? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it John Gotti? Who is it? Who is it? Not, not, with, not as an anger, but as a thing that this is something within me. I'm not going to allow my circumstances to dictate who I am. That's the whole thing about the gang stalking stuff. It's spiritual. Are you going to allow a circumstance to tell you who you are? I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got too many people riding on this. You know what I mean? <clears throat> There's people not even born yet who are who are probably going to end up going through what I had to go through, and they're they're counting on me. They're riding on me right now. People 20 years from now who don't even exist are counting on me right now to lay down the foundation for them. I got too much riding on this dog. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. <clears throat> and so that's what that's what I do. I go out there <clears throat> and you know. The, the, the circumstances of gang stalking are average. Look at what the Holocaust victims went through. Look at what, you know, imagine what being black in Mississippi in 1930 was like. You know what I mean? So what's gang stalking? It's an average thing. It's average. You got to be phenomenal. If you want to beat an average circumstance, you got to be phenomenal. And that's one thing I do. That's one thing I do. The rest of the world says, uh, you know, Jonestown happened this way. Okay, we're going to find out the truth. We're going to be phenomenal. Bam, we get the truth. The rest of the world says, you know, this happened. You know, this, I'm talking about my conspiracy research. The rest of the world says this happened. I don't believe that. Bam, we're going to be phenomenal. We're going to get the truth. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and so now, Entity said, we have to keep Jamil disconnected from himself. So he does not find out more truth or expose more truth. And so they put the gang stalking thing on me. And so I'm saying, you have to be phenomenal, man. I got bored with conspiracy research. This is something much better. This is allowing me to help other people who are actually going through this. And I'm telling you, man, I see people, like people are actually on YouTube, like literally in tears, scared. Do I look scared to you? Do I look scared to you? I'm not scared. I don't care if 50 people walk up to me with flashlights in my face and stuff like that. I'm not scared. <clears throat> I'm going to be trying to motivate. I'm going to be, that's 50 flyers I'm passing out. That's 50 flyers I'm passing out. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's 50 more people who know my story. That's 50 more people I'm going to help. You know what I mean? That, that's more people, that's more glory to my story. You know, that's, that's more glory to my story. That's all that is. And so, you know, and, and I'm talking to people everywhere, not just, and we're, you know, Passing on flyers, I mean, if you live in California, if you live in New York, you know, we do a coast to coast like eggs and toast, you know, Frisco to Maine to Spain. You know, you can call me from London, Japan, wherever you're at. I'm, I'm you know, like some, I'll be there to hold you. Down. You know, I'm coming through. If you live in Moscow, Russia, I'm coming through if you got the money. I'm going to show you how I got through it. You know what I mean? That, and that's that. So, one of the things you got to do is get spiritual. If you're an atheist, still have, still pray to something. Pray to yourself. You know what I mean? It's not about who God is or, you know, I mean, I don't know what you believe or whatever. I just talk to the Spirit. And that that's good enough for me. I talk to the Spirit. And so I live by Lake Michigan. I go down to the beach and I'll be walking. So I, loved, I, lo I used to love to do that at night. Now I like doing it in the day. You know what I mean? And so entities will approach me at the beach. That's one of the best things about gang stalking is the places I go, they're already there. I'm like, man, that's cool, man. Guy approached me with some sunglasses with his family. He had a deep southern accent. I'm like, oh man, he, I know what happened. He got a free, he got a free ride up here. They paid for him to come up here for free, just for him to gang stalk me for a few days. That was part of the deal, right? And so I'm telling him about my experience. How I'm telling him about my experience. How I, I, I was all over Hollywood and Beverly Hills and stuff like that. I used to do conspiracy radio and stuff like that. I'm, I'm giving, I'm telling him. Like, man, this, this is my experience, and his kids are listening and stuff. They're all learning from me. 
they're all learning from my this it's an opportunity. Every time you see somebody who's, who's, who's watching you or following you or listening to your phone or, or whatever they're doing, they're connected to your energy. That's an opportunity for you to be more of yourself and expand. That's number one. That, that's just an opportunity, you know. And so that, that's just an opportunity. So <clears throat> let me think of something else. Let me think of another thing. Um, don't, be, don't be stagnant. Don't stay in one place for too long. Move around a lot. Go to different places. See different people. If you don't have anybody you know, make some people you know. Just keep talking to people. Even if it's only the librarian. You know what I mean? They're going to try to get people to be rude to you, but that doesn't work very long. Just be yourself 110%. That's all you got to do. Um, another thing, I'm trying to think, what really bothers people about the gang stalking and stuff? For so the sunglasses, see, people walking up to you with sunglasses, I don't know why that bothers people. To be honest with you, I mean, I would think seeing the person's eyes would be more intimidating, but I guess the sunglasses sun has some effect. I mean, I know, you know, I studied the real CIA. I know these people aren't the real CIA. I know what the real CIA looks like. I studied them for years. I know the people who run the CIA, you know what I mean? And they know me, so that doesn't bother me. Sunglasses? Who you got sunglasses? We got a van? You know what I mean? Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, listen to this story. I was in Phoenix. And I was staying at the Best Western. When I first got there, I was staying at the Best Western in downtown Phoenix. And last time, when I went to the channel panel in L.A., they had a guy, black sunglasses, uh, black SUV. And this is one of the, this is like the main secret society I got into it with. He shows up. Right? Not the guy driving, not the guy there, but... The same, they did the same tactic on me. I called for a taxi from the hotel in Phoenix to go somewhere else. That day, my room was up, and I had to leave. But before that, I had went to an Italian restaurant. And I guess the people at the Italian restaurant, you know, they're somehow connected to the Vatican or whatever. They, they're like, uh... They're like... Well, anywhere, any restaurant I go to, it's gang stalking thing. But for some reason, this restaurant seemed to have more pull. And so I get back to the hotel, and I'm leaving, and I call for a cab. The hotel calls for a cab, and a black SUV pulls up. They're doing the same. They were using the same. Now, at the channel panel, I ran. I got scared. I didn't know I was being gang stalked. I thought this was another attempt on my life. There had already been an actual real, a real, real attempt on my life before that. This was just the gang stalking program, and so I'm thinking, like, all right, so, I mean, what the fuck, you know, these people are trying to whack me in front of the hotel, and so, <clears throat> I ran, this was back in the channel panel thing last year, and so, at this time, in Phoenix, the guy pulls up, and he's in the black SUV, I'm like, oh my god, they're doing this again, and so, I'm like, we, we gotta do this one more time, ah. <laughs> and so, I, he, he's like, he, he gets out, and he's all like tough and stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, where's your bags?" And I'm like, "You're a taxi?" And he's like, "He's like, yeah, I'm a taxi." He's like, "He's like, he's like, why are you scared?" He's like, "You're so big, you're so tall." He's like, "Are, are you a little girl? Or are you a man? Why are you scared?" And I'm, I'm like, and so I know what's going on. This is, but I'm thinking, but one part of me wants to connect to the the the, the loser part of me wants to connect to the fear. And think, man, if I get in the SUV, where what's gonna happen? These people, are, you know, they got four or five guys waiting there with a taser or something. They're gonna taser me and take me out, you know, to the desert or something like that. Another part of me is saying, Jamil, you know who you are. You know, you know where you're at in your life, and you know that you, there's a real purpose for you on this planet. There's no reason for you to be afraid of any of this. It's all illusion. And so I get into the, I get into the, I go into the hotel and I ask him. I said, Is this a real cab? And, and they're like, they're like, yeah. So the people in the hotel are in on the town. I'm like, uh, I'm like, all right, man. So I, we go into the SUV, and mind you, I'm still a little bit jittery because I know who the pe the people are that that I um, some of the main people, the main people that I had got into it with, and these are people I, I actually sat down and and spoken with in real life, and so I know what they're like, and so I'm like, a part of me is just like, oh man, I don't want to do this, you know what I mean, so I, I'm like, man, these are some out cold mofo, you know what I mean, what are they going to pull on me, you know, and so I get in there, and, uh, 
And these are, I'm connected to these people the most. And they know that. When they show up, it's just like, ah, oh, yeah. we got to do this again. And so I get into the SUV, and the guy is driving the car, and he's like, he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever hotel you're going to, you know what I mean? If you, whatever you need, you need, you need, you want, you need a ride at night to go to the club, you need some girls or whatever, I'll bring it to you, I'll bring it to you. And he got the taxi cab card and stuff like that, the, the taxi, and I'm like, man, this was a hell of a psychological thing. And so it made me get over a big fear. Actually, that was a reconfirmation. Am I truly afraid of death? That's what that was. Am I truly afraid of death? That's what that was about. Am I still, did I learn my lesson? Yes, I'm not afraid of death. And so I get, I, I go back. He drops me. Now, I didn't call the cab. He gave me a card and everything like that. He's like, yeah, next time you go somewhere. Bro. And so I'm thinking like, you know, I, I'm not too excited to, to hang out with the have this guy come pick me up again, but at the same time, you know, what are you going to do? It's, it's all good. And so he drops me off, and so I'm like, man, this is a hell of an experience. And so, I mean, I'm down in Phoenix, and then there was one, I was out walking one time, and there were these two guys, and the whole time, the gang stalking people in Phoenix were like, man, this guy's tough. We can't, we can't piss him off. And so I'm like, yeah, man, I, I've already been going through this. I'm hard, you know what I mean? And so they're all, they're trying to find little things to add, and they tried hard, man. They were working hard. They had to end up drugging my food, and that didn't even work. I'm still out there hitting the jump rope. Bah, 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 bah. I'm still active, man. I'm still doing it. You know what I mean? And so, um, oh, what happened next? What happened next? What happened next? So, I okay, I end, I end up doing that. I end up going through that with the guy who dropped me off. So I'm at the new hotel, right? And every hotel I go to, they're in on it. And the new hotel, the new hotel, they were 10 times more in on it than the one I left. And I'm just like, man, should I tell these people what's going on or not? And part of me is just saying, just don't say nothing. And so they only know they're getting paid to play a part. And so after that, I decided I'm just going to let people know what's up, man. I'm just going to let people know my story and what's going on up front. Give them, let them know who I am. I just tell them, Google me. <laughs> you know, if, you know, you can just Google me and you'll come to, you'll come to my Facebooks and all that stuff. You'll know how to get a hold of me. And so, you know, it's just, it just what it is, man. It was a hell of an experience the whole year. Just going through gang stalking over and over again. And it's like lifting weights, man. If you're lifting weights, you don't get stronger from lifting from lifting the same weight over and over. You have to move it up. And so I go, I go deeper into it. I go further into it. You know what I mean? I go further into it. I, I just keep going. I just keep going for what's like the hardest, man. And it really bothered them, man. The gang stalking people. I mean, literally, they had like experts coming in. They had people coming in from all over, professional type of people, doctors and stuff. Like, how are we gonna drug him? What are you putting in his food and stuff? You know, <clears throat> I'm taking this. I'm taking the gang stalking thing as a positive thing. I'm not looking at it like this is a bad thing in my life. I'm looking at it like this is gonna help me become who I need to become, no matter what. Every day I wake up, there's something there for me to learn. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what, there's something here for me. And so, you know, I'm just putting it out there, man. And I was on the other side of the country. You know, I don't know anybody in Phoenix. I don't know anybody in Phoenix. I don't know. They might pay, you know, they might have paid somebody to, to you know, uh, come after me with a gun or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what these people... I don't, I'm not worried, I don't care. I know my life has a path. See what I'm saying? So you can use my life, if you just started getting gang stalked, and you don't know what to do or whatever, you can use my experience. You can come here to where I'm at, Norton Shores, Michigan, United States of America, or I can come to you or whatever. So I'm just telling you my, my story. You know, all right.